That was Holly Ellsworth Clark doing what she loves doing, being on stage. Right now, her family and friends are wondering if they're ever going to see her on stage again. Unfortunately, Holly's been missing for about a month at this point. There has been a lot of media kicking around on it, but we're going to see if there's something that we can do to help raise the exposure and maybe get that critical tip called in. It's time to turn on the searchlight for Holly Ellsworth Clark. Welcome to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today so we can look more into Holly's case together and hopefully together raise exposure so that critical tip can be called in that will help her family learn where is Holly. Now, from what I've been learning, there are many different sides to Holly. I wanted to start at her Facebook page and just share a post. It's actually the last post that she made. It was on November 19th, 2019. I just want to share it with you guys here. I've been thinking about losing myself and my way. I've been thinking about the things in my life that keep me wanting to return. I've been thinking about making my days ones that I want to return to because I love them. I've been writing. I've been making a home. I've been missing home. I've been missing all the people in my life who have my back, my team. I've been missing people who I want to show up for. I've been finding some of these things here. And then she includes a video clip of a, another performance of hers. Um, as you could tell, we've got a young woman here that is coming into her own. She's trying to find her way into the music scene, having a few bumps along the way. Um, and then a few over the course of a few days, some kind of disturbing things happen. Uh, there's a very concerning message that she leaves with her family, and then she literally disappears. Uh, let's learn about where this is happening together with a quick stop at Wikipedia. This is in Hamilton, Ontario. Hamilton is a port city in the Canadian province of Ontario, has a population of 536,000 people. Since 1981, the metropolitan area has been listed as the ninth largest in Canada and the third largest in Ontario. Hamilton also ranked first in Canada for police reported hate crimes and organized crime also has a notable presence. Um, I don't know if crime really fits into her disappearance necessarily. There's kind of one aspect as we go through the research where it might be a factor. So that's just why I wanted to include that information. But from what I hear, Hamilton is like a lot of other met metropolitan areas. There are good things. There are bad things. There could be a dark, seedy underbelly to it as well. Is that coming into play into Holly's disappearance? Uh, just kind of keep that in mind as we're rolling through the information here. But let's start at the Hamilton Spectator. Hamilton police search for missing woman. Holly was last seen in the Sanford Avenue and Cannon Street area. Police say she was distraught and not dressed for the weather. And this is published on January 13th, 2020, which is only a few days after she went missing. Holly Ellsworth Clark, 27, was last seen on Saturday, January 11th, 2020 at 4 p.m. She's described as six foot one, approximately 200 pounds with an athletic build. She was last seen in a black long sleeve shirt, black pants, black boots, possibly with a black backpack. And we're going to learn more about that with some information as we go forward. But uh, one thing to note, um, she is a bit taller. She stands at six foot one. Uh, in terms of the athletic build, she has a, um, a history related to wrestling in particular. Uh, while she was at college, we're going to touch on that as we go forward as well. But the last known location that they are listing here is Sanford and Cannon Street. Uh, if we kick on the satellite view here, we can see... Looks just like a neighborhood area, uh, a lot of homes around here, a lot of businesses, some parks, recreation center, some schools, 
Um, so that is what they note, but we're going to find there's actually some more sightings and uh, some more locations we're going to look at as we go forward. Jumping over to inthehammer.com, uh, please start ground search, and that's on January 15th, 2020 that this article came out. Police said there will be a heavy police presence in the area of Sanford Avenue North as they look for missing person Holly Ellsworth Clark. Residents in the area are encouraged to check backyards and sheds. Anyone with surveillance, uh, video surveillance, is also asked to check their camera for footage between 4 and 6 p.m. on Saturday, January 11th in the evening. So um, they've got a, a tight window, and they're basically asking for this information to try to put together um, her steps, to try to see maybe what direction did she go off in. Uh, so that's why they're really focusing on this area at this particular time, at least with the information that they're asking for publicly. Uh, jumping over to the star.com, as officers intensified their search in the 300 meters around Holly Ellsworth Clark's residence on Sanford Avenue North near Bristol Street, her family organized searches of their own. Uh, so we get a little bit of a different description there. We're hopeful but very worried, said her sister, Kate Clark, who was working to organize volunteer searches. The 27-year-old is athletic and was known to run trails, so police have checked nearby trails, including Albion Falls and the Rail Trail. Uh, here we have a team of people that are out helping to look for her, put up posters, and help the search efforts. There's no evidence of criminality, but police and family are concerned for her safety. None of her family live in Hamilton, and she doesn't know many people in the city. Uh, I believe that she only moved to this area in October of 2019, so we're only talking about a few months that she's been living there. She's been living in a house with several other musicians. Essentially, it sounds like uh, her band in her old area broke up. I think she also went through a separation. She might have been dating someone that was actually in the band. Um, and then I think one of those band members or a friend of hers said, hey, you know what? I've been hearing that Hamilton has a good music scene. I'm going to go out there and try it. And she kind of came out with them. So we've got several musicians living in this house together. Uh, almost immediately after she was reported missing, Ellsworth Clark's parents flew in from Calgary where the 27-year-old grew up. Her brother and sister have also been working to find her. Um, certainly, her sister, it seems like, has been doing a lot of the media touches. She appears in several of the articles uh, that I've seen on this case. Kate Clark said her sister moved to Hamilton in October with the hope of launching a music career. Holly is a wrestler and is very skilled outdoors as the family spent time camping, her sister said. She's never done anything like this before. So let's continue um, and learn just a quick touch on Holly's background as a wrestler. Here we can see a photo of her actually at an event. And if we jump over to GoDinos.com, that's for the University of Calgary, we have a particular article about her here written February 27th, 2016. For the second consecutive year, Holly Ellsworth Clark brought home the sole CIS gold medal for the University of Calgary Dinos. As a fifth-year graduating athlete, Ellsworth Clark wraps up her CIS career with three CIS gold medals and one silver medal. So, you know, in a lot of cases, we wonder, is there some aspect of the person goes walking down the street, someone takes advantage of the situation, and there's some type of crime that happens. Um, from what we're hearing here in her background and also comments from her family, this is someone that kind of knew how to handle herself and standing at six foot one, uh, you know, weighing around 200 pounds. Um, I, I really believe that if there was some kind of crime, oppor crime of opportunity element, um, she might have had a decent chance to ward that off. But you never know what that can include. You never know if, uh, you know, someone's armed or something along those lines. So I think despite the fact that I think we would all like to feel comfortable in saying, you know, oh, this is a girl that could just handle herself. So something like that couldn't have happened. I think we still need to stay open to that possibility because you never know um, what, what the odds are in, in a matchup like that. You never know what else is being introduced into a, a criminal act. If it is truly some type of random criminal act that's going on here, which once again, I know I've already read it, but I'm going to say it again. The police are saying they have no signs of any criminality going on here. So over at CBC News, uh, every now and then I hit a journalist that I think is going 
the extra mile for a particular story. I really feel like that about Bobby Herstova. Hope I'm saying that right, Bobby. Uh, he's written several articles about this and he's really digging beneath the surface. There's many articles that are essentially just repeating the uh, press release information. Bobby isn't going that way. He's really pulling out a lot of information about this case and about Holly. Um, so I just want to thank him for being an example of some good journalism going on around this. Uh, this was posted January 20th, 2020. Dave Clark says his 27-year-old daughter, Holly Ellsworth Clark, was very, very terrified days before she went missing last Saturday. Here's a quote from him. She called us and said she had been running from two men and was afraid for her life, the Calgary man told CBC News. We didn't know what to think. It sounded preposterous. I said I was coming out to get her, and the next day, she disappeared. As a matter of fact, they actually have a voicemail that Holly left. Let's go ahead and listen to that together. I would really, really, really like a plane ticket out of Hamilton to Calgary, please. And I would like to come home and visit you and Dave. I'm missing you so much. And I love you so much. So that's that's all I want in the world is to see you and Dave. I love you both so, 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 so much. So um, uh, if you could please... Um, uh, could you please help me out with a, a plane ticket? That would be, that would be really, really greatly appreciated. Okay. I love you. I love you. And I look forward to hearing from you. So obviously that's a different message that she left. That's not the one talking about the two men that are following her. You can hear she's still upset. Um, sounds to me like a little bit more than just being homesick and she's asking for uh, some way to get home for them to basically buy her a ticket. Unfortunately, they haven't heard her voice since that message. Uh, now we get to this part of the story. Uh, there's a budget inn that is somewhat close to uh, her home. So here's the corner where they said they had the last siding. Her home is actually, it's, uh, it looks like it looks like it's four blocks, but they're kind of small streets that are kicking off. But you can see that her home is essentially uh, four streets north of that location. But if you go further south, uh, a few more blocks, you can get to this budget inn. And I can tell you guys on social media, there's a lot of people talking about this place not being a very good location, uh, likely an area where there might be some type of criminal activity that's going on. Well, that comes up in this case very early. Monday morning, Clark and others staked out the budget inn on King Street East after he says tips came in to the family alleging his daughter was alive but drugged in the motel. Clark says the tips he received indicated his daughter may be a victim of human trafficking, but Hamilton police say the lead investigator of the case has no reason to believe that at this time. Now, I can tell you guys, um, with the many families that I speak to that are in similar situations, this angle about someone being trafficked comes up very, very frequently and sometimes around extortion efforts. Sometimes people will contact these families, say, I know your daughter's victim of human trafficking. If you Western Union me $10,000, I'll tell you where she is, or give me a bunch of money and I'll buy her so I can get her back to you. Um, it's unfortunate, but there are people that are looking for these types of situations to take advantage of other people. Is that what's going on in this case in particular? Let's continue uh, with the coverage here and see what we can learn. Over at inthehammer.com, there have been reported sightings of Holly at the Budget Inn at King Street East and Sanford, but local reports suggest police have not been able to obtain warrants to do a thorough search of the property. And I've seen that reported in several places. However, there's an update on Facebook from her sister, Kate, uh, on January 21st saying, after a diligent search of the budget in by the Hamilton police, we regret to inform you that Holly was not in the building. Thank you for all your work so far, but please keep looking through the internet for any recent photos that Holly may be in. We are asking people to check the backgrounds of photos to spot her. 
So despite what you might see reported, if you look into this for yourself, it does seem like there was a search and I understand they actually got into every room in that building looking for her and they could not find her. Continuing at nationalpost.com. Uh, this is another person I'd like to call out. Uh, Sammy Hughes um, did a very good job on this piece. Uh, I, I'm really, honestly, I feel lucky just when I can find one uh, reporter that's doing good work on a particular story. This one, thankfully, has two. You can see there's just a lot of people that are rallying around this case, trying to help this family find Holly. At the time of her disappearance, she was not dressed properly for the weather, according to Hamilton police. Ellsworth Clark's family believes she left impulsively with little planning involved, having abandoned all of her belongings, and that she was likely scared, confused, and emotionally distraught. So this is a cold and rainy afternoon where she basically is going out in pants, uh, a long sleeve shirt, her boots, and maybe carrying a backpack. And that's it. Not even a jacket, no type of hat or headwear to protect her from the weather. And she just leaves like that. Uh, we don't know exactly what's in the backpack. I haven't seen any description. Um, it's hard because this isn't someone that's been living at home. So it's not like... Her family could say, hey, we went into her room and we noticed, you know, these five items were missing or something like that. We're pretty sure that she has a backpack. We'll get some more information about that in a moment. At one point in the days leading up to her disappearance, she broke into her own home through a window. Unbeknownst to her, Ellsworth Clark's roommates called 911, worried she was suffering from a mental breakdown and hoping to find her some help. Uh, now, I believe this was actually the day before her disappearance where this went down. I haven't found a really strong reason or explanation for why she would have to break into her own room. Uh, I get this sense from comments from her father that he thinks she's still in this mentality of possibly being chased. Um, I don't know about the time frame about when she called them to say that she was being chased by two guys. Um, but it just it's very strange to me that she would have to, you know, break a window to get into her own room to get her stuff. And of course, that just raises questions about was there someone that she was living with that she didn't want to interact with by going through the normal entrance and she was trying to get in and get out in some way? Um, I don't know. But then seeing that it prompted them to call 911 and in particular, they were worried about some type of mental breakdown. Very, very concerning. Soon after, however, she was nowhere to be found. Quote, all of her behavior can we can see now is completely consistent with just being absolutely terrified of someone, said Dave Clark, Holly's father. Hamilton police have conducted ground searches, but so far have not been successful in finding Holly. We've had a lot of leads and none of them have really panned out, said Dave. Nothing has turned out to be real right now. We're lost. We'd appreciate any help we can get. And that is why in the description box below, you will find the contact information. If you have info to help this family, please call it in. There's several different methods down there. You can call the police directly. We've got the case number down there. You can also call Crime Stoppers if you need to remain anonymous for any reason. And the family is also taking tips and they're saying they would effectively do the same thing. They would act as a buffer and keep your information anonymous if you really need that. Holly graduated from U of C in 2016. About a year before she wrapped up her degree, Dave said he taught his daughter to play three chords on the guitar. She took to music immediately and before long was writing her own songs and playing in public. After collaborating with other musicians in Calgary, she decided to move to Toronto in 2018 to pursue a musical career. Uh, and then, of course, we know from there that she would move again. Three months ago, she followed a former bandmate to Hamilton, having heard positive things about the city's music scene. Holly regularly frequented local music nights and open mic events in town, all the while working remotely for a condo management company in Calgary by phone and email during the day. So it sounds like, you know, we've got someone kind of living as a struggling artist, struggling artist type lifestyle, you know, sharing a home with several other people, but effectively still holding down uh, a day job, still being able to make money with that. Um, so just some indicators that I'm looking for in terms of stressors in her life. Um, I don't know. It, it seems like she's kind of got her ducks in a row. 
and potentially, you know, maybe she's not happy with this recent move. Maybe the, the music scene out there isn't really playing out how she thought. I know some people are, are speculating about some type of substance abuse issues or something like that. Certainly, you know, there's in the music scene, there's there's certainly a potential for that in any scene. Quite honestly, there's some potential for that. I'm really not seeing any type of strong indicators and I'm not seeing anyone that I would call a uh, source, a good source of information in this story coming forward with anything about that either. We've got her roommates there. I'm not seeing them really comment publicly about this case, um, which I'm just a little concerned about. Pretty much the only thing that we've heard from them is that they were concerned about her when she tried to break into her own room and they called 911. There's really nothing else out there about them. Uh, I'd be curious if they had some type of input into other factors that might be going on with this case, but I'm just not able to find that at this time. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with another article over at cbc.ca. And it's another article by Bobby Herstova on January 22nd, 2020. Hundreds of people filled the inside of the Eucharist Church on Victoria Avenue North Wednesday evening, all looking for one person, Holly Ellsworth Clark. L. McPherson, one of the leaders of the search effort, said, she's the girl next door. She's the type of girl you would let babysit your children. She and a handful of family friends sat at tables in the church, handing sheets to locals ready to trek around town and look for Ellsworth Clark. And here is a photo of L. Elle. Elle is also a very close friend of Holly's. Ellsworth Clark's sister and brother, Kate and Caleb, silently sat in the church hall as they and members of their crew waited for tips to pour in via social media and phone calls. Dave Clark, Ellsworth Clark's father, briefly entered the building after the crowd left to check on things and speak with McPherson. Clark tries to stay optimistic, but says they're still in the dark. And here is a photo of her father, Dave Clark. If Ellsworth Clark isn't found today, McPherson said it will still feel like square one. Day one was panic. And today, panic. It's the same. It hasn't changed. We want her home, she said. So how do we know about this black backpack at all and the clothes that she's wearing? I, I assume we might have got the description from her roommates if they saw her leaving. But better than that, Hamilton police release photos. Uh, here are some photos of her. I believe these are, these are actually taken from a camera that is at the home that they're all renting together. I know these photos aren't great, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you guys here. But uh, we can see Holly here walking back and forth. I believe that this might be um, the entrance or the exit to the home. And in this third one in particular, there's this shape back here that I believe could be a backpack. I actually took it into a photo program, tried messing with the brightness and contrast. I, I couldn't get a really solid sense of it, but I do think that there is a backpack that is slung around her shoulder. Some other articles that I saw were saying they thought it might be some type of leather, uh, like a black leather knapsack or waist bag or something along those lines. Um, but I don't know, this this third one I think is our best bet at understanding the shape of it. I personally think it's some type of backpack that is slung uh, on her left shoulder. And then in this fourth one, uh, we've got a shot of her basically uh, walking down the street. Her father really working hard on all the press here too. He really appears in just about every article on this case. We get more information from him here. Dave said, there's no evidence that Holly has left Hamilton. She didn't go on vacation. She has money in the bank and she has a credit card and they haven't been used. She had those with her when she left, he said. Uh, apparently she also, I've seen some things saying that she might have had some money with her as well. I'm seeing other articles that make it sound like she might have left some money behind also. Um, but once again, this doesn't seem like someone that's really having an issue with money in particular. Um, her taking the cards with her, I think is a good sign, but we have one thing that's not so good. Uh, her cell phone is not with her and we don't have a very clear explanation of where it is. Uh, I think we can assume that maybe she had left it back at her home or maybe she had lost it previous to that. It seems like, uh, the, the authorities and family might know exactly where it is, but that information just hasn't come out publicly. The only thing that has come out is that her cell phone is not with her. 
Even as they've yet to locate Holly, Dave said the positivity of the community has been uplifting. Holly just touched people wherever she went, he said. The search for Holly has intensified as we go along instead of petering out, and that's because of her. We're experiencing the positivity of her more and more as we go along. It's hard to not at least respect that and at least try our best. We've got a family that's working very hard to raise that exposure, uh, and this is one of the other steps that they're taking. There is now a billboard posted in the area. Family and friends of a missing woman have put up a digital billboard in her Hamilton neighborhood appealing for her safe return. I'm seeing some other information where there might already be another billboard up or there's plans for more billboards to go up as well. Jumping over to globalnews.ca, uh, we have kind of another sighting. Family of Holly Ellsworth Clark says new video footage from Hamilton police brings them new hope. This was posted January 31st, 2020. And you can see in this photo, we've got a familiar person walking down the street. And in this video clip, we could see it's a ring camera uh, that someone uses to watch their side gate. And that is Holly that's walking by. Now, a few things to note with this. Uh, the first is it looks like she is wearing a trash bag to help protect her upper body. And it also looks like she has a trash bag slung across her back. And it looks relatively full. Uh, the first thing I was thinking is I'm wondering if she did leave with the black backpack um, somewhere along the way, she bumped into a couple of trash bags. She's doing that to keep herself out of the rain. She puts one on as a parka and then puts her backpack in the other one. But quite honestly, the shapes that I was looking at to try to identify if she was carrying a backpack in the earlier pictures and the shape I'm seeing for this bag in particular, it just it looks like this bag is much bigger. Um, so I don't know for a fact. I don't know if there could be something else in this bag. Uh, I don't know where she would have gotten it in particular, but it just seems to me like whatever she's carrying in this bag is a bit more substantial than the bag she had when she was leaving home. Uh, let's continue the article and see what we can learn. Previously, the last known sighting of Holly was at around 4 p.m. that day, but on Wednesday, January 29th, police say they received new security footage from around 4.50 p.m. The footage shows a woman wearing black pants, black boots, and a black garbage bag over her upper body, walking northbound on Wentworth Street, approaching Shaw Street. Holly's mother, Greta Ellsworth, said the garbage bag attire is something the family has done in the past. We would take garbage bags with us to the Calgary Folk Festival or on family canoeing trips to try to stay dry if it rains, she wrote in the statement. Dave Clark, Holly's father, said the footage shows that she was, quote, using her knowledge and experience to take care of herself. So when I first heard about this sighting, I checked the map and I can see that this is only about a half mile from the, the at least the intersection they say was the last supposed sighting, which is uh, Sanford and Cannon. I'm not sure if they were just trying to protect her home address and that's why they used that intersection. But from there, about half a mile, only about 12 minutes of walking time. So for her to be walking by there at 4.50 uh, certainly leads me to believe that she has made some stop along the way or maybe has cut out a different path. Uh, we know she must have stopped somewhere because in the pictures she's leaving the house, I don't see any of those trash bags. Admittedly, maybe she grabbed the bags and just threw them in her pocket or something and then later actually put them on. Uh, I don't know if that's the case or if she found them somewhere along the way. But also, I believe that the four o'clock time frame when she left the home is kind of loose. I don't think that it's necessarily at four o'clock on the dot when she left there. It's really unfortunate that in those photos that we have of her, um, there's not a time code that we can look at. And it's weird because I get in this third one, it looks like there's a little piece of a time code that's actually in that image, but we're not seeing the whole thing. Uh, this article is saying that she was leaving home at 4 p.m., but once again, I, I have a feeling that it's not really four on the nose that she's leaving. Um, 50 minutes to walk half a mile, that's way, way too long. It just, it doesn't really uh, make sense unless, like I said, she's stopped somewhere or she has something else that's 
uh, that's going on in terms of the route that she took. Her father, Dave, says the new video changes things for their search strategy, even if the video is from the day that she left. It shows me she's not just running in panic, distraught, getting soaked in very cold rain, he says. It shows she's got her wits about her, a little bit at least, and maybe fully. We don't really know whether she's gone off after a mental breakdown or if she's completely in her right mind, but she's walking along with her usual determined stride there. She's still herself. Dave and Greta also don't know what Holly could be lugging in the garbage bag slung over her shoulder. We had never been to her room before she went missing, Dave says. The Clark family is asking people with dash cam footage near the area from January 11th to reach out. Continuing with another article by Bobby Herstova over at CBC, the search for Holly Ellsworth Clark continues as her family says they have found for the second time new footage of the missing woman walking in Hamilton the day she went missing. So this is now a chain of, we know they have some type of video from her house when she's actually leaving. We know that they got the ring camera footage that we just looked at. Uh, this is now a third piece of tape and at a different location, uh, which is great because three actually gives us a sense of the direction that she's going in. Uh, let's continue with more info here before we review that. The latest images have prompted police to conduct new ground searches near the city's industrial waterfront. Al McPherson, one of the leaders of the search effort, tells CBC News they found a combination of footage from dash cams and security cameras from January 11th that shows Ellsworth Clark walking, quote, on a mission. And I don't know if you caught that, but her father was kind of commenting on that, too, that she was just it seems like she has a very determined walk um, in, the, in the first footage we looked at. Certainly, it looks like she's heading somewhere. She doesn't look like she's just kind of meandering around the neighborhood. It looks like she's trying to get somewhere. Uh, we now have her friend kind of calling out that same thing. Officers say the new tip prompted them to check the area around Wentworth Street North and Burlington Avenue East. Thankfully, over at chch.com, I did find one source that has this new footage so we can watch it together now. So here it is. Uh, looks like the weather might be kicking up a little bit again. Uh, we have her walking, but a few interesting things. It looks like she's putting up her hair in a ponytail. And right near the end of the clip, you can really get the sense that both her hands are clear. Doesn't look like she's carrying that trash bag any longer. So um, even more of a question. First of all, where was that thing at the start? Where is it now? Um, I, I really don't know. And especially when we look at the location here, we're not talking about a huge distance away. So here is a map that I've put where it's all kind of put together in one route so we can go through this. Um, we've got her location, her starting location, theoretically, at her home somewhere near Bristol Street and Sanford Avenue North. Now, like I said, I don't know if this is a real sighting down at Sanford Avenue North and Cannon or if that's just something they were telling the press so that her kind of home address wasn't, you know, really put out there. But one way or another, we get the second sighting, which is on Wentworth, uh, heading northbound. So the ring camera is somewhere around here, Shaw Street and Wentworth Street North. Now we get this other footage that is causing them to search uh, a bit further north up at Wentworth and Burlington Street East. So I have to assume that the camera is somewhere uh, in that general area. And it, it draws a line for us. We now know, at least you know, based on the time frames that we're seeing and what's going on, um, she starts here. I don't know that she actually goes south. Maybe she cuts straight across Bristol, but at some point gets to Wentworth and then she's walking north. Uh, a big concern here is she is heading directly to the port, um, but that could also be a decent thing. I would think that there's probably a lot of cameras around this area as well, and we can see that this this investigation is one of the better ones I've seen in terms of finding cameras and piecing together the steps of where someone is going. Um, so does she actually make it to the shipyards, um, to the port up here? I don't know. I don't know, but this is the path that we've got her going on straight, almost a straight north shot right up Wentworth. And that basically brings us to today. We know that they are sending more search teams out to that area. They're going to look. Um, that area does get quite a bit more industrial. So 
Uh, I imagine there are some really big challenges in terms of the searches that they have going on out there. Also with industrial areas, you have ownership issues. So having to contact owners to get permission to search specific areas, I think there's probably a lot of logistics that they're gonna face um, trying to search that area right now. Um, but that is, that's where this case is. Um, I think with the direction that we're now seeing her move, that the whole budget in thing, I just, I just have a feeling that that was being called into the family, maybe in some effort to extort them, maybe in some kind of really gross prank or something like that. Uh, it doesn't seem like that information is um, something we could really lean on. We now have cameras showing that she's basically going in the opposite direction. Um, but there is that bag. Where did the bag come from and where did it go? That would lead me to assume that we've got two more stops. How come we don't have people coming up uh, saying, hey, you know, I saw her. She was at this particular location. She was, you know, around a, a dumpster where she it looked like she had picked up a bag or uh, she went into a store or she went into someone's home. There's there's two other things that are going on in this timeline that we really aren't able to reconcile at this point. Um, I don't know, guys. I don't know. But there is a very touching note that her brother has been leaving. I've actually seen a few different pictures of it. He's essentially leaving it close to areas where they've posted uh, her missing uh, missing persons poster. Sister, I want you to know that I love you more than anything. I miss you so badly. I miss laughing with you. We will do anything to help you if you choose it. We do not care what happened. I'm so sorry we left you alone. Please come back. I love you. And it's signed brother. And then, of course, um, includes a phone number for him to call him because we know that she doesn't have her phone. Uh, how do we know that? Over at bringhollyhome2020.com. Uh, here they have uh, a lot of information, including an appeal from her father. Uh, really just heartbreaking appeal where uh, he's, you can tell he's just, he's hoping that this is some type of album release stunt. Um, but you could tell he really doesn't believe that. He's hoping that she, that it's like a soap opera situation, that she has amnesia somewhere and, and they're just waiting for her to remember. Um, I really hope that one of those things is true too. But uh, additional information they have here, Holly does not have her phone or computers. Holly really loves running and biking outside, even in winter, and will often run at night. She spent a lot of time in parks and on the trail systems, could have run a fair distance. She likes graffiti and probably knows some places to go to see interesting pieces. She would likely be willing to break into somewhere abandoned for shelter and knows how to build debris huts. Something else very important that he points out here is if you think that you do see her, um, call the authorities right away and don't approach her directly. Uh, they're very clear on here that um, she she's not exactly open to strangers uh, coming towards her. And not to mention the fact we don't know if there is some issue going on with her mental state at this point. So um, try to call authorities. Maybe if you don't feel like you're going to get the authorities there in time, take a picture, get that information to people in the description box below. I think that's the best way that you can help with this case at this time. Uh, there are a few other sources that I want to let you guys know about on today's video before we finish, and that is a Facebook group called the Holly Clark Search. Uh, there's a lot of updates that I'm seeing that are going on here, and they seem to coincide with the webpage Bring Holly Home also. But on top of that, I did find another page for Help Find Holly Clark. I don't know if this one is kind of as official as the first, but I'm going to put them both in the description box below. Uh, for anyone that's looking to help with the searches, I think just follow both these pages. Um, and if there are additional searches, I'm sure they'll be asking for help. I can see that they've done that previously there. Uh, also, I did bump into an interview that Holly did on a podcast called The Underground Listener. Um, I listened to it myself. Just once again, gives you a really strong sense of who Holly is as an artist in particular. This is a really intelligent, bright, optimistic young woman. It doesn't feature any of her music. There's a strange message about them saying that there was no preview of her songs on the podcast due to some unfortunate circumstances. I, I don't know uh, what they're talking about because this is 
July of 2019. Uh, maybe the band broke up but after this interview was done, but before it was released on the podcast, possibly that jammed up the music for some reason. But it's a very interesting conversation with Holly about uh, what inspires her, what inspires her music, what she's going for with all that. And it kind of gives you an interesting perspective on her point of view about life and about like being an, your authentic self. Um, so you might want to check that out as well. Of course, I'll have that in the description box below in the links. There is also a web sleuths thread down there. Uh, it's about six pages long at this point. I think we've covered just about everything that they've covered on it in this video, but that's the great thing about web sleuths. It's an ongoing conversation. So if you want to contribute there or you want to follow it for more updates, I think that is a great source. And that's why I always include those for you guys, um, if I can. So before we end today's video, I just want to say um, for Holly's family, if any of you see this, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out. If there's anything that you think I can do to help you guys further, please just send me an email, john at lordandarts.com. Uh, if you would like to come on to do an interview to help answer some of the questions we had, or if there's any clarifications or uh, things we got wrong that we need to correct in today's video, please just let me know. We'll absolutely work to do that. I'm really sorry that you guys are facing all this. And I have a link in the description box below to a tips page that I put together where I've tried to put together some of the best ideas um, that a family can use when they have a missing loved one. So you guys might want to check that out and just know that there's a bunch of us out here that care about Holly and want to see her come home to you. For you viewers, you can help with that. If you have friends that live in this area, please share this video with them. Let's get more exposure raised around Holly's case. Let's keep it up. Let's be part of this snowball of media that I've been seeing on this case. And uh, hopefully we can get in front of the right person and, and get that tip called in. Before I end today's video, I have to thank several new patrons, starting with Valeria Ronchi. Thank you, Valeria. Elizabeth Tinney. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And Carolina Nolan Hernandez. If you would like to support the channel, please visit www.lordnarts.com. Come back on Friday for another episode of Brain Scratch. It will be part three in the Jessica Easterly case. We are concluding our interview with her sisters and her best friend. You certainly don't want to miss that. Three amazingly strong women. Uh, and we're getting into some of the details that we can about uh, when they discovered her. So uh, please come back for that on Brain Scratch on Friday. Take care, everyone, and I will see you there right here on the Lord and Arts channel.